Absolute scenes as Alison bags the winner, Suarez the hero for Atleti, Barcelona plan for a new coach, a chance to round up, and today's Emoji Mondays will be coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host, Matt Frolick. You are the one footballers, and this is the Daily News. First off, and oh my lord, you guys know about it, Alisson scored for Liverpool. The last minute the goalkeeper comes up, it's an unbelievable header and it's one of the most exciting things that happened in the last few weeks. I mean, just the goalkeeper coming up for a corner is exciting enough for most football fans, but the fact he got on the end of it and absolutely buried it to give Liverpool all three points is just astonishing. In fact, I think he's the first goalkeeper in the Premier League to score with a header sensational stuff. Anyway, it does put Liverpool within touching distance of the top four. They are now one point behind Chelsea and three points behind Leicester. Not only do those two in third and fourth play each other on Tuesday night in a massive, massive game, they were also doing battle this weekend in the FA Cup final, which Leicester won. And my word, that was an emotional weekend. Not only for Leicester, but for having all the fans back in Wembley as well. And what a ridiculous goal to win it from Yuri Tielemans. A sensational strike into the top corner, but of course, the game didn't go past without any VAR controversy. Now, we'll talk about the second decision first because Ben Chilwell was offside. It's extraordinarily tight, but the decision is correct and it is offside. As for whether or not Iosi Perez handled the ball before Leicester's goal, this is where I guess a little bit confusing. Now, I've looked at both of the rules set out from the FA and the Premier League and it turns out they're slightly different. From next season, for example, this goal would completely 110% stand. It's only ruled out from next season if it hits the arm and then another player directly scores. But it hit Iosi Perez's leg, then his arm, then it fell to Thomas, I believe, the left back who passed it to Tielemans who then scored. Whether or not this is a new phase of play, I don't think so, but Perez has gone for the ball with his whole body, basically. It's hit his arm, hit his leg. It's very, very difficult. And in my unbiased opinion, I'm kind of glad that the goal stood. Not because it was an FA Cup final, you can't really take into account the situation when you're talking about the goal, that's unfair. It's just the fact that there is no way that Perez is deliberately playing the ball with his hand. It's such an unfortunate deflection. I think it's a good job the goal stood. Anyway, like I mentioned before, an unbelievable weekend for everyone at Leicester, but not such a great weekend for Chelsea Football Club as a whole, because not only did the men's side lose the FA Cup final, but the women's side were completely torn apart in the Champions League final by Barcelona women as they were 4-0 up within 36 minutes. They went on to keep a clean sheet, therefore win 4-0 and take home the Champions League, and it now means that Barcelona are the first club to have both the men and the women's team win the Champions League. As for the men's team, though, things didn't go so well this weekend. That's because there was a very poor home loss to Celta Vigo, which completely knocked them out of the conversation for the La Liga title. With one game to go, it's still between Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid because Luis Suarez helped turn things around for Atletico. They were 1-0 down heading into the final 10 minutes and with Renan Lodi grabbing the equaliser, Suarez grabbed the goal, which really, really should make Barcelona regret selling him in the first place. Anyway, that victory coupled with the fact that Real Madrid won 1-0 at Atletico Bilbao means things head to the last game of the season. And if Atletico Madrid can just match Real Madrid's result on the last game of the campaign, they will be title winners for the first time since 2014. Elsewhere in a bit of title news from around the rest of Europe, Besiktas won, meaning they took home the Super League title. Rangers went through the season unbeaten with 32 wins and 6 draws as Steven Gerrard's man lifted the trophy, although that was confirmed a few weeks back. And in France, even though Lille drew at the weekend and PSG won, they're still ahead by one point, which, much like with Atete and Real, if Lille manage to just match whatever PSG do on the last weekend of the season, they will be champions of France for the first time in 10 years. But moving on then, and actually we mentioned Barcelona's poor loss at the weekend. Of course, there are questions over Lionel Messi's future still, but now there are even bigger questions over Ronald Koeman. A few weeks ago, it was looking quite positive for the Dutch manager. There were uh, rumours about new signings coming in and wanting to work with him, like Memphis Depay. Apparently that deal is still close. They were in La Liga title race. They were taking home the Copa del Rey trophy after winning it. But now things aren't looking so rosy at the end of the season because they're looking at it on the whole. On the whole, they were embarrassed in the Champions League. They've fallen short in La Liga. And yes, they have won the Copa del Rey. But really, are they moving forward positively? Is Ronald Koeman the right man to take them forward on a whole new project? Apparently not. According to reports coming out of Spain this morning, Juan Laporta is looking at sacking the manager and probably will do before the start of next season. Who's going to replace him, though? This is a rather interesting point because the main man who's been touted to take over the job is Xavi. 
I know what you're thinking. Hold on, Matt. Didn't you tell us last week that Xavier signed a new two-year deal with Qatar side Al Sadd? Yes, that is absolutely correct. But apparently he's heading back to Barcelona for talks because there was something in his contract about him allowing to negotiate with his former club should they come calling. I really don't think that Al Sadd will be in a position to hold on to him if Barcelona did say they wanted Xavi as their new manager. So it looks like there may be some truth to these rumours. The thing is with Xavi, yes he is inexperienced certainly in the European leagues, but he does have quite a good few years of coaching under his belt and Al Sadd including lifting the title. And on top of all this, he would be more of a project manager than Ronald Koeman would. He knows about the club, obviously. He's an absolute legendaire, and recently his appearance record was only broken by Lionel Messi. If anyone could keep Messi at the club, it would probably be his former teammate in Xavi, and a lot more people would trust him, and he'd have the ability to know what is demanded of a Barcelona team and what he can bring to the coaching role in a similar vein that Pep Guardiola did and Zinedine Zidane did at Real Madrid. Moving on then to a quick round up of the rest of the day's news and transfer news that you might have missed, and talking about Zinedine Zidane, he has completely rubbish rumours that he told his squad over the weekend that he's to be leaving at the end of the season. Spotify owner Daniel Ecker said he has had a bid from Arsenal rejected as he tries to take over the club. So that's Andy Bramovich will unfortunately miss Euro 2020 as he's picked up an injury with AC Milan. And last but not least, Robert Lewandowski matched Gerd Muller's record this weekend with 40 goals in a Bundesliga season. 14-28 is absolutely insane. Anyway, he's got a chance in the last game of the season against Augsburg to take the title for himself and get that all-elusive 41st goal. Right then, let's move on to a quick round up of the rest of your Friday feels where CyBP said that Leicester would take home the F a cup. Han Solo also correctly guessed that Dortmund would be 3-1 victors over Mainz over the weekend. And Aaron Joby correctly predicted that Besiktas would take home the Turkish League title. Right then, let's move on to Emoji Mondays. This is when we at One Football throw a couple of emojis down over some of the weekend's hottest action. And first off, the best player for me goes to Carlos Baca, who bagged a ridiculous hat-trick against Sevilla. What a win for Villarreal. 4-0 sets him up nicely for the Europa League final in a few weeks. And Baca coming into some sensational form. The craziest moment of the weekend, of course it goes to Alisson. We talked about it before. The goalkeeper scored a header. You love to see it. I mean, maybe not if you're a West Brom fan, considering that the goal disallowed, and maybe if you're not a top four fan of Leicester or Chelsea. But for all football fans everywhere, what a stunning last minute goal. And lastly but not least, the best result of the weekend goes to Nantes in France, who won 4-0 over Dijon at the weekend. Now, of course, Dijon already easily relegated, but what it does do is mean that Nantes have a fighting chance of staying up on the last day of the season. Because between 13th place Rem and 18th place Nantes, there are two points separating them meaning that one of six clubs can go down on the last day of the season. That's all from me then. Make sure you check out everything else we've got going on at OneFootball. And until next time, I will see you guys later.